So what we're gonna be looking at here is how to actually go step by step through a watering hole attack, configure it, set it up, and watch the results of what happens when an unknowing victim comes and visits the site after uh, someone's actually set up a watering hole attack. Now what's gonna be going on on my screen is I'm gonna go ahead and quickly set up the exploit on my side, then visit the website that's vulnerable to cross-site scripting, and I'm going to end up planning my watering hole attack on that cross-site scripting vulnerable site. And then we'll switch over and look at it from the victim's perspective. We'll actually see the victim visit that site after I put my code there. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and completing, complete setting up the exploit here. I'm going to set just a few little parts here, the port that I'm gonna listen on. I'm also gonna set something called a URI path. This is the location behind that IP and port that we're gonna have this machine visit. So there's all my stuff. I go ahead and launch the exploit. Now at this point, what I've done is I've actually set up the exploit that's going to exploit whoever's browser happens to visit my site. The challenge here is how do I get someone to visit this little malicious site that I've just set up here? Well, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do it via a watering hole attack. We're gonna find a site that we know people are gonna visit and then on that site, find a cross-site scripting vulnerability, plant a pointer that points back to our malicious site and just wait for people to come cash in for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that happens. This site right here is a malicious site. And this is uh, a VM that you can get on the open source web here from the OWASP website. I'm just kind of setting it back to its default. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to stored cross-site scripting, log in, and let's just pretend this is any site that you visit frequently. So on this site, I'm gonna go ahead and post a comment as we would anywhere else. And in that comment, I'm gonna put in a iframe tag that points to the server that we were just on, which is the machine that we're sitting here on now. So I'm gonna put a pointer back to my machine, which is 204, and the port was 8080, and the URL was AA, right? That's my iframe. Now, just in case you don't know, what an iframe is, is it's basically just, if you've ever visited a site, and you went to that site and you saw that there was another little website inside that site, that little site that's in there that you can scroll up and down inside that page, that's what an iframe actually is. And we use those for a lot of different things. In this particular case, I'm using it maliciously. So what I'm actually doing is exploiting cross-site scripting via an iframe, which leads to overall it being a watering hole attack. Okay, so let's go ahead and complete it. So I go ahead and sign the guest book. And we know it actually worked because now we can see on the page that we just signed, there's our little iframe, our little site within a site there that's going to actually be what we want our victim to actually see. Now, I am not affected by it because my browser is not affected by this vulnerability. But let's go ahead and look at it from the victim's perspective, right? So now we're gonna go over, we're gonna play the part of a victim that just happens to be going to visit that same site. So victim goes over to visit that same good old site that we always visit. Victim logs into their account. Victim decides to go look at the same site and just from loading the page, you can see the iframe that I planted earlier load there. Just from that page loading, at this point, the victim is actually compromised. To prove that, let's go back and look at the attacker screen. When we go back and look at the attacker screen, what we see is the attacker has now generated a session. And what that session is, is the attacker now has access to the victim's computer because they visited that site. So the trick here is the malicious code wasn't actually on the, bat, on the good site. It was a pointer on the good site that pointed to the attacker site that had the bad code. This is how you get around like filters on Facebook and places like that, that would otherwise block this attack, okay? So let's see what this gave us. 
once we connect to that session, we now have complete control of that victim's machine. We can do things like take a screenshot and we can see what they see on their screen. We could also reset passwords. And most importantly, we could actually elevate privileges. For example, if I were to go to a command shell and check my per permissions here, you can see that I'm just a regular user. Now in the world of Windows, the highest possible privilege you can ever have is that of system, which is the Windows equivalent to what we call root in Linux. Well, I can now, because I'm there, I can find a process that's running with that elevated privilege, which is gonna be an easy thing to do in Windows because so many processes run with elevated privileges. I'm gonna pick the service services.exe here, which runs on every Windows system in the world. And I'm gonna to try to migrate into that service, which has a process identifier of 492. So I go ahead and do the migration, try to migrate into 492. Windows happily says, okay, no problem. I'll let you migrate into that. Now, if I drop down to shell, the permission I inherited is system. So now I've got the highest possible privilege you can ever have on a Windows machine. And at this point, I can do something like this, net user infosec. Create a user. And most importantly, I can now add that user to the local admins group. And at that point, it's game over because this computer completely belongs to me. And we got here by waiting for our victim to visit a site that we were able to post an iframe in that points back to a site that we control. And this, folks, is exactly what a watering hole attack looks like, and this is also why it's so devastating.